Hi everyone, and welcome back. To help show the previous section's criteria in action, I will be running through an example that demonstrates how I listen and extract the information I need. For this example, we will be looking at the track Assault on the Sentinel from the Titanfall 2 game by composer Stefan Barton. This track is a fairly typical example of high-paced video game action music. There are three major sections in this piece. The first one has a fast-paced tempo and lasts for the first minute. The middle section drops the intensity level down considerably and features a bed of strings that increases the emotional intensity. The middle section also lasts for about a minute before entering the third section. The final section begins to build up the fast-paced intensity again, incorporating some percussive elements from the first section. Oftentimes, one entire reference piece will not be perfectly suited to your specific composition goal. So for the sake of practice, the only part we will want to focus on will be the first section. Following the aspects we learned in the first section of this lesson, let's start applying them to the opening minute of this piece. I will be providing a digital score to help visualize some of the aspects for you, but you do not necessarily need to do this yourself when it's your turn to analyze your own reference piece. The first aspect we covered is tempo. By tapping the metronome along with the track, a tempo of about 100 emerges. This will be a good starting point for our own composition. It's also evident that the meter is 4-4. The next aspect we covered was percussive rhythm. For the first half of the first section, the driving strings really create the percussive intensity over the actual percussion. So for the opening percussive rhythm, constant 16th note staccato movement is the predominant feature. By trying to listen and isolate only the opening percussive bits, a subtle pattern emerges that crescendos from beat 3 to beat 1. At 40 seconds into the piece, a shift occurs that gives the percussion the driving 16th note feel and takes away some of the presence of the strings to make room for the horn melody. The big hits are reserved for the downbeat of every other bar. Other things to observe is the lack of high-pitched percussion, that is to say, any cymbals, hi-hats, or shakers. All the percussive sounds are lower-pitched toms and drums. So to summarize the percussive rhythm aspect, a constant driving 16th note feel in low-pitched percussion and strings are the predominant force. The next aspect is bass lines. This piece doesn't really have a dominant bass line. The bass stays relatively static throughout the entire piece. There is some arpeggiated movement later on in this section, so that would be good to note, but it doesn't give it an identifiable feature, and therefore is not as important. The next aspect to look for is melodic phrasing. A strong melodic line starts around 13 seconds in. The melody avoids starting on the downbeat, and instead starts on the weak second beat. It also uses a combination of leaps and steps in various directions. There is also a call and response sort of construction, where the second and third iteration of the opening melody imitates the first, but either changes direction, notes, or durations. Most of the notes belong to the tonic scale and don't fall into the realm of non-chord tones. Other distinguishing features are the slides or bends from one close note to another. This really gives the melody its defining character. The second half of the section features another melody. This time the melody is a descending sequence of notes that contain mostly stepwise motion. It also features a call and response type of structure with the second half imitating the first half very closely, only modifying the very last note. So to summarize the melody, it contains a combination of steps and leaps in contrasting directions and utilizes slides or bends from one note to another. The next aspect we want to look at is the harmony. The first half contains pretty standard harmonic minor harmony. The only exception to this is when the strings play a natural sixth instead of a flattened sixth around 28 seconds in. This could be a short switch to the melodic minor scale instead, but isn't really enough material to denote a new mode or scale. 
The piece then modulates unexpectedly with no preparation to the flattened sixth note, in other words, starting in A flat minor and moving immediately to E minor. This shouldn't necessarily be a huge surprise, as movement by thirds, either major or minor, is very common in film and commercial music. This new key is also the harmonic minor scale or mode. So to summarize the harmony, the piece is mostly grounded in a harmonic minor scale with no major deviation away from it. The final aspect we want to cover is the instrument choices. This piece has a heavy emphasis of strings for the rhythmic content, using the full spectrum of ranges for the first bit, and then moving towards only lower pitched content for the second bit. Harmony is also largely created by the string section, and then incorporates some low brass to fill in the harmony for the end of the second half. Instruments for the melody start with some sort of synth or electric guitar, and then move towards medium pitched brass for the second bit. No other obvious choices were made. Hopefully, by seeing this example in action and incorporating the techniques learned in the first section of the lesson, you will be able to apply these methods to your own reference pieces and extract the information you need to create similar style compositions. Don't worry if you have a hard time finding certain aspects. Sometimes the pieces don't contain any, but you should be able to extract enough key aspects to help you in your own composition. Your assignment for this lesson is to listen to the provided reference track and answer the following questions. Question 1. What elements make it quintessential to its genre? Question 2. Apply the techniques learned in this lesson to document the six different aspects we covered. Those were tempo and meter, percussive rhythm, bass lines, melodic phrasing, harmony, and instrumental choices. The second assignment is to find a reference piece that contains some aspects of what you want your own piece to be. The entire reference piece doesn't need to contain all the aspects, but a portion of it should. Once you have your reference piece, apply the techniques learned in this lesson to document the six different aspects we covered. Here's a helpful hint. Using a spreadsheet might be the easiest way to keep track of all the different aspects you find in your pieces.